So let's get started and let's code our CPU. I've got Visual Studio Code Editor open here and we're going to start a new file. So we can click on New File and we will start off something really simple, uh, adding two numbers together. So we will call the file add underscore two underscore num. Now we have to give the file the extension .asm. If we don't give it this extension, the assembler won't recognize it. So that's us off to a good start. Now we're going to make a comment first of all. So in order to make a comment, we put in the semicolon. Everything after the semicolon is a comment and is ignored by the assembler. So the comment will be add to numbers. So that's us off to a good start. Now all of our programs are going to start off with origin uh, 0 cross 8000. And what this does is it tells us where the start of the program is. So whenever we run up our CPU, the first thing it's going to do is going to say, well, where do we find the uh, actual program? And the little bit of BIOS that we have tells it. So the bit of BIOS says, go to position 8000 in the uh, RAM. So that's actually at the beginning of the RAM. And the program's going to start from that point. So this is really us telling their assembler here that the program starts at 0 cross 8000. Now, the 0 cross means that it's a hexadecimal number, so it's 8000 in hexadecimal. Now, if we are going to add two numbers, first of all, we're going to add them from the registers. So we have to put two numbers into the registers and then add the registers together. Now, in order to put the numbers in the registers, we can use the data command. So data, and let's say the first number is 2, comma, R0. So the data command puts a number into the register. Now, why have I got a hash? Well, the hash tells us that this is a literal number. If I didn't have a hash, then this would say memory location 2. And the data command would get confused. So it's hash 2. It's a number and we're telling it to put it into register R0. Now, if you haven't seen the uh, CPU, you won't know the register stru structure, but we will talk about that as we go along. So let's comment each of the lines as we do it. So we're simply going to have R0 is equal to the value of 2. Really simple. So now we have to put the next value in another register. So we'll put data and we'll put this time hash 3 into R1. So we're going to have R1 is equal to 3. Now we want to add both of these together. So it's add R0 comma R1. But you may be looking at this and thinking, well, okay, we're adding R0 and R1, but where does the answer go to? Well, the way the uh, language has been built, is that we're going to have the instruction here, which is add. Now, the next one that comes after it is the source, okay? And then the next one that comes after this, which is the R1, is the destination. So whenever we add, the final answer is always, always going to go into the destination, which in this case would be R1. So what we're really going to have is R1 is equal to R0 plus R1. So you might be looking at that and thinking, but that means it writes over the contents of R1. And yes, it does. We don't have the option to have a three here that we can add in. So we can't have like add R0, R1, R2. That's not allowed. Okay, so that's going to give us then our value. Uh, it's going to just put in equals two plus 3, which equals 6. Yeah, you see what I did there? So 2 plus 3 equals 5, and 3 equals 5. Now, that's the end of the program, but if I just put this into the machine, then the machine will continue to do go through the fetch cycle. So I'll, I'll go and try and fetch the next 
um, instruction, but the next instruction will be zero. In this case, when instruction zero comes in, the counter in the uh, control unit will count along to the end, and then it'll just say, well, go get the next instruction. So it'll go and try and grab the next instruction, and it'll just count through an endless loop, and we'll have to get in and stop it. We don't really want this, we want it to finish up nice and neat, so we can put in an end command. And that's the end of our code. Now, as I work through more of these examples, we will just introduce more and more code and you'll get used to seeing the code. And at some point, I will have a video and I'll go through the entire uh, code that we have, but we don't need to bother with that for the moment. All we want to do is just have some fun and just get the thing working and just see how it actually runs. So that's us generated the code. Now we're going to have to um, as assemble it. So and click terminal and run task and you see you've got the option here to assemble. So click on this and it has actually assembled it but you can't quite see it because it's gone off the screen. Let me just make the screen a little bit smaller here and you can see here it says assemble successful. Okay, so if the assembly hadn't been successful, it would have thrown up an error. And then we could look at the error, and the error would have given us uh, potentially the line number where the error occurs. Okay, so there is a little bit of debugging within the assembler. So we want to add two numbers together. Let's go and we'll take our assemble code, and we will load it into the machine, and we'll see it running. We have our machine here all ready to go, so we can click down into the computer. We go to the RAM, so this is the very first location in the RAM. This is the location 0 cross 8000, where we're going to hold our program. So I can right click here, edit contents, we can open the file, and the file here is called add underscore 2 underscore num, and it's got the extension m.c, so that's machine code. So if I press open, you see it's actually loaded the program in, so there's a, there's the program there. So 01 is the data command, so it says put the number 2 into register 0. Now the next one is 0101, which is put the number 3 into register R1. And then the 2501 is the 25 is add, and 01 is register 0 to register 1. And then 5800 is the end command. So a really straightforward little bit of code. Now, we're not going to be able to see very much whenever it runs. So if I run it at full speed, it should run really quickly. So simulate, tick enabled, and you see that's it finished. So it put two in here, it put three in here, it added both together, and it got the number five. And you can see that the programming has in fact ended. We've got the little red light. So that's our first assembly language program up and running on our machine. Now don't worry, whenever I do other code snippets here, we will actually go in and we will watch the machine working away, okay? So there's lots more for us to see here. In fact, I could create, you know, I already have created loads and loads of really, really funky code and uh, I'm going to create an awful lot more through this video series. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you did enjoy it and you would like to help me out or become a part of what is actually a much bigger plan that I have, then uh, you can get me on my uh, Patreon under Ross McGowan Maths. I'll leave the link next to the, uh, the YouTube video. So thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.